that we learn the nature of God. I said it's in the valley that we learn the nature of God. It's His presence in our pain. It's His love in our loss. His patience despite our complaints. It's through hardships He may have to strip us of our pride. To renew our passion yeah. for Him within us. To purify us and to refine our character. Yeah. Now when Jeremiah got to the potter's house, what he found there is two wheels being turned by the potter's foot. He kind of worked it up and down and these two wheels would turn and it would spin, spin his table with his plate in his hand. It was held in the potter's hand. It wasn't high tech. There was nothing high tech about it. But it was a high touch because the potter's hand was on the clay. Yes. The potter's hand was on the clay. The first step we take is simply putting ourselves on the potter's wheel into the hands of the master potter, God Almighty. Amen. He yep. won't put you there. You have to put yourself there, Brother Marcus. Right. That's right. Now, when we do that, when we do that, church, when we place ourselves on the potter's wheel, we give up the right to ourselves. <laughs> We're no longer the one in control, if you will. We cannot mold ourselves because if we do, the Father's going to sit this step back and say, oh, you think you can do it better? Well, then here it is. What happens a lot of times is our life becomes a mess. Amen? We're no match for the Father. He knows the end from the beginning. He's all over. He's powerful. He's everywhere. If we try to be in control, we will never apply His hands in our life, Brother Greg, because God will not mold an unwilling vessel. We give up right to ourselves when we do that. I think the hardest part of this process is that we're not willing to leave ourselves on their potter's wheel long enough for Him to mold us into the vessel that He wants to make us. We become impatient with the process, if you will. We don't leave, we don't leave ourselves on the potter's wheel because He sees us in a different way than we see ourselves. Just so Kim, he sees us in a different way than what we see ourselves. That, that, that thrills me that God sees me differently than I see myself a lot of times, Brother Ray. He sees me totally different than the way I see myself sometimes. That's right. One of the points I want to share with us is that I believe before God ever starts to form and shape our lives is that He always sees us as, as a finished product. He already sees us for what we can be for Him. He knows that. We're a vessel that's going to bear His name. And He sees us as that and we're going to be used for His glory. God told Jeremiah, He said, well, how do you know that? God told Jeremiah, He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you was ever formed, Jeremiah, I knew thee. I knew what you were going to be. I, I've talked about Jeremiah before, but it's totally amazing. He preached for 40 years through the reign of five kings. Do you know how many people that he's seen converted or saved or turned from their wicked ways? Zero. Not one. The things that he had to endure was just amazing. He even told God one time, Brother Terry, he said, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to quit preaching your word. I'm just not going to do it anymore. But he said his word was like fire that was shut up in my body. He couldn't get away from it. He had to speak it and that he had to tell it. He couldn't get away from it. God had called him for a purpose. He was a finished product in God's mind and he knew what he wanted Jeremiah to do. Even though some people would not consider him successful, God seen Jeremiah as successful because done what he wanted him to do. He said, I ordained you to speak to the nations. Jeremiah even went so far as to tell God, Sister Man, he said, I'm a, that's a child, I can't, I can't speak. But God told him that he's going to say what the Lord will tell him. Be not afraid, for I am with thee. What the Lord will tell him. Be not afraid, I am with thee. The Bible says the Lord touched his mouth. He said, I put words in my mouth. This day have I sent thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy and throw down, to build and to plant. I believe God had a plan and a purpose for every one of us here tonight. Amen. 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 Sometimes we can't see because as I said, well, I hope we don't leave ourselves in the Father's will. 
long enough for the finished product to happen. Amen. The secret to the potter's mastery is in his touch. One touch from God in our lives will change everything, folks. Amen. Yes, amen. One touch of God's hand will change everything. Yes. One of the most sophisticated tools that a potter uses is his hands. We cannot perceive or understand God's hands in our life. We will never see what He wants us to do. If we do not allow God to change our spirit and our nature, then we will never change our destiny. Can I say that again? If we do not allow God to change our spirit and our nature, it will never change our destiny. Amen. If the master potter would give a novice the will to form the clay, if he turned it over to me, something I'd never done, I'm talking about somebody. Have you ever been to Silver Dollar City and seen those people that do the pottery and they, they do the glass and they, they blow it? Yes. They're professionals. They know what they're doing. It's just a crazy state. They, they're experts at it. But if it would be turned over to me nine times out of ten, it would be a disaster. That's right. It would be a disaster because what what uh, what was said in this article that I read that a novice will make 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 a start at the top and that he presses down to form the depth to form the vessel. He's going to start at the top. He's going to press down. We might have to go down to the potter's house, but we, we when we get on the potter's wheel, there's only one good way he's going to form our lives. He's going to have to start at the bottom and he's going to lift us up. That's right. He's going to start at the bottom. And he's going to lift us up. He's working the lumps out. And that's why we've got to be patient with him. That's why we have to be patient with him. Anyway, he, may, he may want to take all the things out that are hindering us. Right. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Yeah, he takes our past out. Yes, he does. He takes our failures out. All right. He takes ourselves out. Anything that's going to hinder us, our disappointments, our inability to forgive others, our insecurity, He wants to take them you know, and move them all out of our life. That's, that's, that's pretty amazing when we think about that. Brother Brian Kinsey is the one who wrote the article on this, on this potter that I'm talking about. Brother Kinsey said, the mystery of the potter's will exists. How can the clay be marred in the hands of the Almighty God, the creator of the universe, the original potter that formed Adam out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life? You see, the mystery is in the clay. <laughs> Clay that's on the wheel, there's still imperfections there. That master potter has a, a plan to change it. He has a plan to work it out. That's what makes it so great and so amazing that he can still feel that clay in his hand. If we're going to be in the perfect will of God, things are still going to go wrong. If we're living for God with all our heart, we're still going to have good days. We're going to still have bad days. That's right. Things are just going to happen. It's just going to be that way. Life happens, folks. Yes, it does. But we got somebody we can call. We got somebody that we can turn to. We got somebody that we can depend on when things are going to go wrong in our life. We've got that master father that's there to help us out. Yes, I am. The word broken, as I've already said, means broken, bodily separated in parts, crushed, uh, uh, not, complete, not complete or full. There's a song called Break Christ, Your Broken Life. And it says this it says, Break Christ, Your Broken Life. So mark by sin, and He will create a new, make whole again. Your empty, wasted years, He will restore, and your iniquities remember no more. Break Christ, Your Broken Life. The greatest demonstration of God's power through the Scripture is how God salvages broken lives. That's right. You don't always choose those that are most equipped to do the job. You study the characters in the Bible. He didn't always, he didn't always use those most equipped, equipped to do the job. But he always equipped them to be able to do what he wanted them to do. Right. Psalms 51, 16, and 17, and David had a clear insight. This is after he, he sinned with Bathsheba. He prayed this prayer in Psalms 51. He says, For thou desirest thy sacrifice, 
Thus, I will give it down the last night and burn offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, that will not despise. Psalms 34 and 18. It says, The Lord is not to them that are of a broken spirit. And Satan such as to be of a contrite heart. Isaiah 53, 3 through 5 says, He is despised and rejected of me, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. I read this passage in Scripture, Brother Billy, and as I read it, I began to realize that, that the one that became broken was the Lord. Yes, yes. And the reason he became broken is just beauty so that we could be revealed. Amen. He was the one that took all of our pain. He's the one that took all of our suffering. All the sins of mankind was put on him. He died for us. So that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Five things I want to talk to you about allowing God to get our lives is acknowledge that I'm broken. Sometimes that takes getting our pride out of our way. It requires complete surrender to God. Submit to the will of God. How many of you know that's probably one of the hardest things there is to do is to submit to the will of God? To be willing to do whatever He asks us to do. You've been there, you've fought it. I've been there, I've fought it. It's not easy to submit to the will of God. Have faith in God. Somebody said it the other night. Well, share me if God brought you to it. And he's going to take you through. Amen. Amen. You have to wait when there seems to be no way. Allow God to do the work and direct the rebuilding. We've got to trust the process of the pottery. Amen. Because he molded us into a vessel of honor to bear his name. You've got to trust his process. First Peter 2 and 9, very familiar passage of scripture says, because, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible sometimes we're going to go through the fire and become like the Lord. The clay has to go through the fire process. Sometimes you need the process in pottery when you study pottery. The vessel is put into the fire and sometimes it comes out and it's cracked. And what what they will do, what the potter will do, he gets a, a sukha insect, which is called a tick. And what he gets out of that is the blood from it. And he takes that blood and he mixes it with a pottery mix and he applies it to the crack and he refires the vessel in the oven. And there the transformation takes place because after the vessel comes out of the fire, after it's been repaired with this blood on this head, you cannot find the crack in it anywhere. <laughs> the blemish is gone. The blood of Jesus Christ is still flowing today. It's what washes away the sin in our life. First John 1 and 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as He is the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Can we stand with me? I've got one more point to make. I'm getting ready to close. I want to leave you with these four facts about the master potter. And I'm talking about God Almighty. The potter knows the origin of the clay. The potter knows the nature of the clay. He knows your nature and he knows my nature. The potter knows what's best for the clay. 
I said the potter knows what, what's best for the clay, and the potter knows how to properly handle the clay. Yes. He's very careful with it, with the man. He knows he knows what to handle, how to do it. He knows how to handle the clay. If we if we could just for a few minutes, could we just 